Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dave Finale, and this is Real Estate Talk, TGIF, and this is episode 284. We have done this broadcast 281 weeks in a row with a few extra episodes, and it's really exciting for me to do this every week and be able to talk to like these, these different and excellent minds throughout North America and the United States, Canada, and it's just so great today to have David Brook uh, from Connecticut, who is the... Uh, the leader of David Brook Group Real Estate, founder of Brook Group Real Estate, as well as being a team team leader, a mentor, a teacher, a coach, and just uh, one of the most sincere people you'll meet in this business that wants to help as many agents as they possibly can, because you come from that place of of helping, et cetera. David, thanks so much for coming on today. Dave, thanks for uh, for having me, man. I'm pumped and uh, excited to share what we've got going on here in Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, beyond. Awesome, man. So we're 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 both in the Northeast. Uh, we're going to talk about you. We're going to talk about business. We're going to talk about you know productivity, et cetera. But first, let's go to the videotape, Nelson. Real estate agents, are you looking to acquire clients consistently to grow your business and income for a great lifestyle? Well, this is Dave Finale. And I'm here to bring you the Real Estate Skill Builder broadcast, Real Estate Talk TGIF, brought to you by Real Estate Skill Builder and the Modern Agent Team. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. This is Real Estate Talk TGIF, episode 284, and it is Real Estate Talk TGIF. And David, I ask everybody the same question to get started, and it is, what does TGIF stand for? Thank God it's Friday. You're really close. You know, I, I hate, you know, you are my guest. I hate to tell you you're wrong, but you're really close. It's thank God it's finale. That's the way we're, all right, we're here and that's how we're getting started. And, and and you know what? You can argue with you, but that's what it is. Anyway, man. I love it. <laughs> thanks so much for coming on. David Brook, founder of Brook Group Real Estate, team leader, trainer, mentor, coach, and all around great human being. David, thanks for being on. You know, um, People have backgrounds, people have stories, people have a journey that they go on. And, you know, a lot of times as well, they were, you know, they wanted to do this and, you know, real estate was something they fell back on. I don't think there's anybody that really, you know, gets ready from high school to college and say, I'm going to be a real estate agent, right? Um, maybe as they own college, they get into the real estate business, but not so much. Talk to me about your journey, Dave, and where you came from. Sure. So I started, um, actually, my desire and passion was to impact people's lives. And so um, in the way that had most impacted me was in you know my early development uh, in my communities of faith. And so I wanted to you know, be a, a pastor. I wanted to be a youth pastor. And so I went to college um, up in uh, you know, South Shore, North Shore, excuse me, of Boston area. Um, and I, you know, my desire was, uh, you know, worship leader, pastor and uh, impact in the church communities. And, um, and that didn't happen. I actually had an experience where, um, you know, the person who my mother was married to at the time ended up, you know, being on drugs. And, uh, and I got a call from college and it, it was like, Hey, listen, let's not, um, can't, can't do that anymore. We're going to, you know, need, need some help at home. And so I just remember, you know, putting that, that college experience to the side and, um, and we just went home and I started working in construction. And when I worked in construction, I felt like, you know, I was at a dead end in my life because I was laying brick. I was uh, working on sites. I was uh, doing, you know, digging ditches. I was installing decks for a builder. And this was back in like 2007, eight, nine. And, um, you know, so that's, that's what I was uh, really spending my time doing. And I, I felt like I was at a dead end. I was like overwhelmed. And I think you're, you're completely right. Like no one gets into real estate sales. Uh, you know, from college, they usually have some sort of passion that's around it. And and that was me. I was, you know, all about being in the church community. And uh, I found myself digging ditches. And I just remember one day I was, you know, installing a brick patio for this builder who was to his new office. I remember looking at those bricks and I like slammed them down. And I remember just like really getting angry one day. And, uh, and I slammed those bricks down so hard. I remember my hands were bleeding because I was just like, I just got angry. I remember taking the bricks, just slamming it against it. I was like, this is so stupid. All my friends are in college. Uh, they were all like, you know, had relationships. And I just felt like I was at the end of my rope. And I remember like just having an emotional breakdown, you know, doing that. And uh, sure, I was young and I didn't know what I was doing. But, um, you know, that was the, my experience. And then what ended up happening was is that as time went on, that crash hit in 2008. Yep. And, uh, Man, that builder didn't have as much work. 
And so that builder was like, Hey, I got to lay you off. I'm really sorry. And uh, he was like, yeah, typically in the winter time, we lay guys off, but we'll bring you back in the spring. Well, that spring didn't happen. And, uh, and, and my dad at the time, you know, he was doing real estate appraising and uh, he's, he's been in the business for like 30 years. So he's like, Hey, listen, you know, appraisals are actually picking up because banks were doing a lot of foreclosure work at the time. Right. And uh, he was like, you know, I need some help. Do you mind like, you know, just assisting with some technology. I remember getting into it and actually loving it. And Dave, about two years into that, I decided, you know, what? these real estate agents don't know what they're doing. I was, uh, I knew the background of construction. I knew the background. I had spent 2,500 hours on task. It's with the state of Connecticut requires for you to be a certified yep. real estate appraiser, as I'm sure you're familiar. And uh, man, I was walking in thousands and thousands of homes and agents were unprepared. They did not have uh, any command of the facts. You'd ask them where certain basic things were in the home. And they were like, I don't know. Like, what about recent upgrades? They're like, you know what? I don't really know. And, uh, and I was shocked about that. And, and I remember one day I went to a million dollar mansion and, uh, and I, I, I saw in there the days on market was like three days. And I just remember, you know, doing a quick calculation as to what this real estate agent was earning for three days of work. And I was thinking to myself, she's going to earn more in three days than I'm going to earn in several months of doing this as a real estate appraiser. And I thought to myself, you know, I bet I could do this. And, uh, and Dave, I was quickly wrong. I don't know what your experience was like getting into the real estate, you know, uh, sales business, but mine was anything but easy. I remember getting in and I walked into a small boutique brokerage in West Hartford, Connecticut. And the, uh, the broker who was there at the time basically was like, yeah, man, you're going to be selling million dollar homes. And so I aligned myself with a brokerage that was like all about the high end. And I found out quickly, you know, people with, you know, millions of dollars weren't just like walking into the brokerage and they were just handing out these leads. Right. Um, it was very much like, Hey, it doesn't matter what, you know, what brokerage you're at. You know, it's all about like your activities and your habits. And I remember like, okay, cool. You know, I need to, you know, actually pave my own way. And so I remember, you know, getting like five, six, seven, eight listings in my first few months and expiring most of them. I mean, my story is just like anything but, but cool. And, uh, you know, I was, I was trying my damnedest and I remember I was like, so broke at the time. I had like no money. Dude. I was like coming off of this. I was like, as a real estate appraiser, I was just barely making it. And I remember going to my broker and asking him, Hey man, I'm just at 50, 50%. And I remember saying, Hey, can I get 5% more, uh, on this next closing? He was like, no, dude, he was like, not happening. <laughs> and I, I, you know, from that moment on, I was like, all right. So, you know, I'm not sure what brokers provide, but it's not a whole lot. Right. And uh, I, I just remember, you know, I, I got to figure this out. And so, you know, when the pain of where you're at overcomes the pain and the fear of what you want to do, uh, that's when things start to change. And that's a change for me. And so I remember reaching out to that builder who I was working for and I had pitched him a few times and he was like, no, 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 I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to go with you. But then he saw me like start to hustle, like really hustle. And uh, man, that evidence started to play out for a real good case as to why you should work with me. And then I remember one day he was like, yeah, why don't you stop by my office? I walked up those brick pavers that I had slammed Damn. down, That's walked cool. into his office and pitched him and walked out with $10 million with the listings. That's um, and that was, that was a start to, you know, some of my sales, sales career. So that's the beginning. So, you know, what's really interesting is I, 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 I we started a little similarly. I, I mean, a couple of years earlier, actually, and I was first licensed in 1976. So yeah, it's, you know, it's a long time ago. And I started working through college and my training was a little bit different than the training you give today. Uh, my training was there's the phone answer it if it, if it rings. And we had our, our office was high tech at that time. We had a three color typewriter. Sick. So we could do our CMAs in three colors, blue, black, and red. So that was, that was like a sick typewriter. But anyway, I digress. And then, of course, I got into construction because my family was into construction. And I did similar stuff that you did, except I was actually doing it for me in a legacy moving forward. So it's a lot different. Right. But, you know, you, so so you, you get in you get into real estate and it's something that started working for you and you hustle and everything. What was what do you think in the start when you started to start making money? What was the most important thing for you as you remember it? Well, as I started to actually like gain some traction, let's just like let's, let's talk about this for a second. Uh, my first year, I made nineteen thousand dollars in real estate. Like this was not a you know huge start. I was expiring listings. I wasn't doing anything that I really should have been doing because I didn't know uh, the broker right. that I was with. You know, he at that you know he was still consumed with the idea 
that a brand is what sells your real estate. And I, I don't know about you, but I have never been a part of a brand. I've been a part of all the creams and burgundies and the reds and the whites and the, all the other, I've, every flag I've flown. And I've never seen one of the heads of any of those companies show up for one of my listings. Not once. So true. And, I, and, and you know what? Here's the cool thing is that all we need to do is just recognize like that's not what they're there for. And any expectation that they're there to do that is just going to get met with disappointment. It's like you want to have a happy life, like have no expectations of anyone. And so like when you release that expectation or you get a, a better expectation around it of like they're there to provide a global you know, platform for me. They're there to provide some, maybe some national branding for recognition, large technology and a platform of how I'm going to get paid. Well, then I start to be able to say like, all right, I just want the company that actually does that the best for me. And I realized that like I'm the brand and I create that own business oh, yeah. and uh, right. my habits do. So I'm going to roll with that. And so what I ended up doing was I, I started to realize, all right, wait a second. I have this amazing luxury brand behind me, but I'm still selling my friend's condo for $60,000, $80,000. And this was again, you know, years and years ago. And right. so I realized, you know, what the most important thing for me was my habits and my activities every single day. And, and, and that was like a shock to me because what I thought it was, what my broker had told me was go hand out these beautiful magazines to people and they're going to see all these luxury properties all over the globe. And then they're going to say, wow, David Brooks sells these luxury global properties. And so he's, they're going to call you. And that didn't happen at all. In right. fact, people were like, wait a second, are you handing off like $30 million properties that you guys sell around the globe? I'm not going to give you my $400,000, $500,000 dollar thing. Like th the message didn't match the market. Right. And so that was a huge issue. And so I needed to realize brokers fit in one spot and agents fit in another. And I hadn't yet gotten, Dave, to the, to the process of what I, even a team was or what it could be and how it could solve things for agents. So. You know, it's, it's funny. I mean, I was, I was a Century 21 franchisee for 21 years. And what I, what I learned there was that that brand, as you said, it's, it's important for like the global stuff and, some, and a little bit of brand recognition. It's not getting you into the house. The brand is, as you said, the brand is you, right? And we look at so many different things in our lives and what's important. And it all comes down to who we are. And that's where the brand is. When you talk to people about building a brand, they're not going to start with Century 21 or Keller Williams or EXP or Caldwell Banker. That's just like, that's an investment, right? That's an investment of support and something you can lean on. But people are going to come to you for what you say, the questions you ask, and the persistence that you have. Does that make sense? Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. You know, so, so all right, so you go along, you, 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 you were at, you, you, you carry different flags, as you said, and now you have, you decide, okay, you're going to go out on your own, you've got your own team. What was important to you in starting that team, in starting that leadership journey of yours? Yeah. So let me start with this. Uh, just, you know, you got the beginning part of my journey. What, you know, it didn't get much better from there. My, my third year. So I did end up getting that subdivision and I, I sold a whole bunch of real estate. And I think I remember walking away with something like, I don't know. I, I, I want to say that I sold, you know, $10 million worth of real estate. Something like that. So 250,000, the broker took a bunch. So I walked with like, you know, $187,000 um, at the end of the day. And, uh, and I had no idea, you know, how to properly save the taxes and quarterly payments or anything like that. So I got hit with a huge tax bill. And then the next year after that, I sold more real estate and I kept rocking. I was like, okay, great. Now I've got my habits and activities, but I didn't have any financial management behind, you know, what I was doing. And call me stupid or call me whatever. Um, you know, agents can point fingers, but, you know, the, but I, w I will say the IRS is pretty clear on this. It's, you know, their, their recent stats, and I think NAR had the stat as well, is like 85% of like real estate agents are actually behind on their taxes. And so like, you know, maybe, maybe I'm, you know, one of the, the you know, I was a stat or whatever it is, um, but I really screwed up, dude. And so I remember like getting to this place in my life where like I had to make a choice. I, I looked at a tax bill and uh, I had, I owed 88,000 to the IRS. Um, I had a tax lien from the state of Connecticut that was coming after my house. And, uh, and I was like 30 grand in credit card debt. And I know right now, you know, you know, times do change, but like some things still stay the same. And unfortunately right now, like the American family has never had less money in their bank accounts. And they've also never had um, as much credit card debt. And uh, that, you know, it, it's interesting when we look at our real estate market, they've also never had as much equity in their properties either. And so it's like a very, very interesting time. And, and for myself, I, had, it was in, I was in a similar situation. And so I needed to get real about my life. 
I need to get real about my business. Um, and I ended up reaching out to, you know, uh, a cousin of mine who's, you know, excellent. My cousin, Ben, who's excellent with money and, um, and also my CPA. And I had to not only pay the past year's taxes, but the current year's taxes. And then I was saving him for next year. Um, and they put me on a budget and, uh, it's funny, Dave, today I still get paid. You know, my team will sell over 500 houses last year in a couple of years, sold 600 something houses or whatever. Um, I get paid the same. I, I, I don't get paid any different. I sure my business grows and we have more, you know, that are in reserves or whatever it is or the value of the business, but I get paid every, the same every single week. And the reason that I do that is because then I ended up in some really, really bad financial waters um, and I didn't know how to manage it. And I needed to get discipline and accountability around those things. And I do not uh, teach and preach what I cannot live. Um, and so I teach agents how to do that as well. I teach them how to manage their money, but getting back to what you had asked, you know, what was next and how'd you get in the real estate team? Well, I screwed up so bad that I needed this process. And within two years, we had not only paid off the past debt, we had not only paid off the currents, we had also saved for the future and, uh, and life turned around and how did it turn around? I mean, I had, you know, I'd gotten some, you know, habits and principles down, but I remember asking, um, you know, uh, my partner at the time, I said, Hey, listen, I need you to literally hold me accountable because I didn't have a, a coach at the time that I was not going to get up from the table until I booked an appointment for the day. And I had to sit and call expired listings that I never wanted to. I, you know, I said to myself, I'm never going to call expired. I'm never going to do this stuff. And I had made every reason in my mind because I had grown up and, you know, seeped almost like, you know, uh, you would for, for tea. I was like drenched in this idea that, you know what, brand is it. Brand's going to bring me, I'm going to just attract these people. But you know what, when if that didn't happen, I needed to go out and make the business happen. And so I learned really hard um, that I needed to go out there and, and call these expired listings. And I, I was going on five listing appointments a week until I was selling 80 plus houses a year personally. Um, and so that went on for a few years until 2017, um, maybe 2016. And then I started the real estate team. So when you, when you, when you had to be held accountable and all this other stuff, was there, how do you translate that to agents today? How do you say, you know, you want to grow a business, you want to build a business because the, because the agents I work with, you know, it's like, you know, I had a conversation with one this week about uh, doing an open house for the week. And I said, well, here's your process. You wanted to go out and you want to do some videos at the house, yada, yada, yada. And um, I get, well, you know what? I, I, I've got other things to do. I said, no, you don't. You don't have anything. You're brand new. You don't have anything else to do. This is what you need to be doing. There's a mindset that's hard to build in here and, and hard to see. And it's like, you know, how do you, how did you, Say, okay, I've got to sit here until I get one appointment every day. I mean, it, it had to suck, didn't it? Or no? Or was it just something you had to do? Yeah. I mean, like, here's the reality of sales. Sales is a process of deciding and discovering. So it's just a discovery hour. So we're going to discover for the next hour, a whole list of people to see if they're ready to transact now or transact later. That's it. We sit for a discovery hour. People are like, make your calls. I'm like, how about discover? How about you just discover where people are at? And if they're like, hey, I'm not near that stage, great. What stage of life are you in? Oh, we're in the college stage. We're doing this. Okay, great. What other stages are you in? Oh, we're getting married stage. Cool. So maybe they, they are going to be in the stage of buying a house a little bit later, but just not now. So I had to get you know into that discovery mode. And so that's that's really been you know crucial for us and for our team. Um and so, you know, for myself, what, what I had to do is, yeah, did it suck? Yeah, because a lot of times people say like, well, if they're not in that stage of buying a house yet, then they're going to reject me. But it wasn't about me. It was just about the timing. And so you quickly get over that. Um, people under, like, they, they overthink how long it's going to take them to get over the rejection. They overthink that. You're going to rip the Band-Aid off. If you sit there for one week and you say, for one week, I'm just going to sit on the phones and ask people how their life is and I'm going to just discover what stage of life they're in, you're going to get over like making your calls like really quick. It's not going to be that hard. But but in the initial period, they're like, I don't know what to say. And you're asking the wrong questions. You're asking like, hi, this is David Brooke from, you know, Brook, Brook Group Real Estate. You know, I just want to check in with you. Do you want to buy a house today? People are like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to pick up that phone call again. But if you were like, Hey, it's David Brooke. I want to just call Dave Finale. You're like, hey, Dave, how's it going, man? Just catching up with you. Is now an okay time? And you're like, no, it's not. Call me at four. Like, cool. Next four o'clock and then hit the next call on your database. Um, and so that's just been really helpful for us to get into that discovery period. 
that's that's a really great way to put it. And I hope everybody can can watch that piece and just hear just that simple line. You know, hey, you know, I'm calling you just, you know, where are you at today? What's going on today? And, and a lot of times, you know, there's something I've been seeing a lot lately is, is people say, well, don't say I'm just following up. Just say, hey, you know what? We talked about this house last week. What what position are you in today? You know, just just go from there. Um, all right. So you start growing the team um, and you've been able to build a great onboarding system so much so that you speak about it and you go out there. And that's actually where you and I met uh, was at a was at an event several months ago where you actually were talking about onboarding and your mentor system. Talk to me about that and 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 the importance of getting that started and where that's where that can take an agent as well as a team leader. Yeah, so the real estate industry is broken. I mean, it's it's 100% proven. 87% of people, as you get into the industry, they fail. So if there was, imagine there was a car that they sold, and uh, and they were like, hey, by the way, Dave, if you buy this car, there's an 87% chance that probably within the first month it's going to break down. Like, would you buy that car? And, and the reality is, no, you wouldn't buy that. You could extrapolate that to a stock. Hey, there's an 87% chance that this stock is going to absolutely go to zero. Would you buy the stock? But people do every day and they do that because they think that, you know what, for me, I'm going to be the exception. And what we really actually find is that the exceptions are for people who are just clearly onboarded with clear expectations. So I started with that when I jumped on here and we started talking about clear expectations. You want to have a happy life? Have zero expectations. Well, for me, I have a, how do we reframe the expectations? The expectations of this is that it is a job that you have to do every single day. And you can get the freedom that you actually want, but you can't follow these three lies. And the three lies of the real estate industry are I can have a flexible schedule, which is untrue because simply uh, if you have unlimited time, which is just time to do it at any time, you know, morning, noon, or night to be available for real estate, they'll take advantage of it. That's right. Yeah. The, the second one is, is that um, I'm going to have unlimited income. And if you have unlimited income, there is a not, not an actual number. You know, infinity isn't a number. Um, and so because it's not a number, it's nothing you can measure. And so if you don't measure it, whether how big or how little, now all of a sudden we have nothing that we can actually find out what we're doing and how we're spending our time. And the third one is, is that I don't want anyone to be my boss or tell me what to do. And the problem is without having anything uh, of, uh, you know, some sort of uh, ability to you know, tell you what to do or have a hierarchy or call it a boss or whatever it is, as long as you don't have that, then you're able to be self-managed. And if you can self-manage yourself in your physical fitness and in your personal, if you can do all those things, then maybe like you're one of the exceptions, but the vast majority of humans cannot self-manage. Well, can. And so be, they, because you, uh, for whatever reason, your, your willpower, just like a diet or anything else, it's going to fade. And um, it, it fades just like a diet. You know, it's, it's statistically proven, you know, you're not going to wake up in the morning and have cake for breakfast, but you will have cake at 10 o'clock at night. And that's because your willpower is going to fade over time. And the same thing happens in the real estate industry. People are like, oh yeah, well, I can totally self-manage. Nobody needs to tell me what to do. And I don't need a team and I don't need all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, cool. Let's like watch your career and let, show me your numbers and show me your calendar and show me your bank account. And the reality is, is most of the time it's like, okay, you can do good for a week or two. Someone can do good on a diet for a week or two. But I'm sorry, I'm not in this real estate career for a week or two. I want to be in this for you know a good amount of time and to create like you know, you know a huge organization. And so if that's the case, then I need other things. And so I myself have uh, accountability as well that I that I put in my life. And so those are three uh, you know lies that people often believe. In order to get out of those lies, you have to put into place other things that are going to allow you to stay on task every single day. And, uh, and this big one, Dave, is, is that you have to create for yourself what is the job. And so I create for people what is called the path to success. It goes along with my onboarding program. And the path to success is very simply defining where am I going to get my business from and how am I going to get it. It includes six strategies on how to do this. And in each one of those strategies includes steps. So let's put it this way. I, I have you know, sphere of influence and online leads, business to business, neighborhood marketing, you know, niche groups, distress sales, or those six. Those are six specific types of strategies. But within that, I need to know what to do every day. And so we have all these steps that line up and people within the company actually design their own path to success and how they're going to achieve you know, units or, or transactions inside of those big areas. But what's most important is, you know what, you can think about this all day long. You can business plan until you're blue in the face. We do enough of that, right? I want to earn $100,000. That's super easy. You don't have to plan. You can make the plan and you can put it on the path to success. That's what I just told you. You can put it on your calendar. But people still don't know what to do and they don't do it for one specific reason. They don't know what to do every single day on the minute. And that's what my onboarding program, my training program does. 
every single day, they have a specific tasks that show up that they need to do. And it identifies it for every single client. Um, when they onboard to our company, it's a 500 plus step process. But when you onboard from everything from signing on and learning the bathroom code in a place, to how to get uh, your, your printer uh, working to, you know, how many you know, people do I need to add to my database today? How many calls do I need to make? And then what do I say? And so it's taken us, you know, years and years and years for us to develop this. Um, but it is, I would say it's unparalleled in the real estate industry in terms of onboarding and getting agents successful. And we've now got over 50 people um, as a part of our team in four different states who are growing their businesses to six figures and beyond. So I can't encourage you enough. If you know somebody who's looking to grow in real estate, I don't care what you know, brand they're a part of or anything like that, you know, this is this is a program that could that could really, really help them. There's absolutely no question what you're saying, man. It works, right? You talked about the three lies. And I always said, you know what? Agents say that they want to come in and want they they the reason they get into real estate is because they can make as much money as they want and they can work as much as they want or as much as they don't want. And I already look always look at that as saying, okay. Well, you don't want to make any money and you, you really don't want to schedule your time because your 87% of people fail. So it's like, okay, I look at that. And I, I also look at, you know, I'll look at the numbers. I'll look at the statistics of what's going on in my MLS to see who's done. And my database, when I'm looking to help people, I'm looking at agents that do between two and 12 deals. Yeah. That changes so much. Like I'll go back now in December and I'll go back six months and redo that list. It'll go from 2,500 to probably about 1,300 now that are people are doing two to 12 deals, right? Um, and there's so many things involved in being able to be persistent and consistent. And you're right. I mean, we, I, asked you, I asked you so many things, and I'm, I'm jumping around a little bit here, but talk about, you know, the, making the calls and the rejection and stuff is, is just getting through and finding out what's going on. Um, when you talk about the six strategies, okay? And I, I think that that's really important to have different things that you can look at and that you can work on on a regular or irregular basis. And what I mean is, for me, I put out seven things, right? And I say, okay, let's look at what you want to fit into your day and what you really want to do. And I get that a lot of people don't want to call for sale by owners. They don't want to call expires because of that fear of rejection. I say, okay, well, a lot of people, believe it or not, some people make have done, done a really good business by just social media or working with their sphere of influence. Okay, so let's make sure that we're good there. Oh, wait a minute. You don't want to produce content. You don't want to do video. Okay, so what else do we do now? The point I'm making is that you're right. You said the business is broken. Of course, you're right. Brand, but I also believe that brokerages are broken. And you've proven that by your... Your 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 um your onboarding process because I don't think there's one brand out there or let's say franchise or big box real estate company that actually has anything like that. I mean, yes, okay, they've got a process, but where the brand comes in, such as David Brook and Dave Finale and whatever we're doing, that's where it's all that's where it's all at, and it's more personal and it's more uh, it's more um. It's more inside. I don't know if I've, I've jumbled that up or not, but the whole part is deciding what to do and actually going out and do it. Does any of that make sense to you? Yeah, there's one more piece that I want to just add to this. Um, and that's, you know, I, if you, we, we need to think of ourselves as like educators in this business as if you would educate someone to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right? So I remember there was a cool exercise that we had when we were, you know, we were kids in school. I think it was in the first or second grade. My, our teachers asked us to write down, you know, the process to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And, uh, and you know, mine was very simple. I'm, you know, more high level. I'm like, I'm like, go up to the bread, you know, take out a couple of slices, put some peanut butter on it, put some jelly on the other side, put it together, slice it, you know, diagonally, enjoy. You know, that was mine, probably seven, eight steps. But this, the one that actually was correct was walk up with left foot in front of right foot up to the, uh, the bag of bread, situate it vert vertically, place your right hand on the top and twist counterclockwise on the tie so that it opens, open the bag, place your hand down. Like it was so detailed as to how she showed us how important directions are to follow. And there was two different ways to look at it. Much of the real estate industry is like, you need to lead gen, you need to get in front of people, you need to have, host an open house, you need to do all those things. But it actually doesn't break down to the very minute things that we have 
learn the hard way by doing this. And we expect others to be able to pick up on those same nuance and fill that all in. When you realize that many of the very successful agents actually learned the hard way when someone didn't give them the right training, and then they ended up having to try to figure it out themselves. And now that they know it, they're trying to teach people how to do it, but they're doing the same exact thing. They're not breaking it down to the minute, which is the difference of what we've done. We've broken it down to the extremely minute process so that every single day you can do that. And if you followed it, and even if you left for the day and someone else came to pick up your role, they'd be able to pick it up exactly where you're at, even if they weren't in the real estate industry or they just got their license yesterday. And so I think that's one of the things that's missing and what's truly broken of the real estate industry is you've gotten down to these very arching, overarching, broad strokes where agents say things that are overarching and broad strokes. They'll be like, yeah, it's still it's a good time to buy. You know, years ago, the interest rates were 14. That's a broad stroke, bro. So which is why we create things that are actual true spreadsheets that show here's where you are today and what it would be if you waited a year or two. And let's break it down to the actual dollars and cents as to what it may cost you or that you'd save from waiting. And by that, agents are able to better explain because all they need is one person who can explain economics a little bit better than them and they're gonna talk to them and say, no, I'm not going to. Or you're gonna get an honest couple who doesn't wanna hear from a real estate agent, it's gonna be fine that the boiler doesn't seem to work right now. Well, I'll just get it fixed. We break it down to the most infinitesimal way and that way it's easily understood for everyone. And that's why we just we just don't have a failure rate of 87% um, on our team. No, and you won't simply because of, of, of how you do it. And you know, just to take it a step further with what you're talking about with 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 how you're explaining to where you are now and everything else. You can you can I like doing that with with a piece of paper and a, and a pen. And it's it's funny when I when I start working with agents and talking to agents. I asked them to go and take notes on, you know, learning the market, learning a neighborhood. And it's okay. Well, I'll just, I got my phone. I can, I can take notes. I said, no, 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 no. I want you to use your pen and I want you to use a piece of paper. Right. I truly believe that it's a lost art to write things down. Why is it important, Dave? To me, it's important because I believe that when you write something down, it, it, it solidifies itself better in you. And, uh, oh, and, and, a, a, and a great friend once told me, writing is the doing part of thinking. And that brings mm. it down to the minute piece of everything because you're actually writing every word rather than typing it in with your thumbs. I mean, I don't think your thumbs are gonna translate so much from your head to your hand to a pen. I, that sounds so so simple, but I believe it's truly, truly, truly important and it helps you actually learn more and be more prepared to anything you're going to do, right? Um, one of the things that, you know, you've, you've talked about your onboarding. We talked about my new things. And this actually prepares the agent, I believe, better than any other method that's out there in bring, breaking it down to every little thing. And one of the things I saw, you know, in, in some of the research I did about you and your team and stuff is one of the things that you strive for is to be being more prepared than any other agent for a listing presentation, for a buyer presentation, for whatever it is you're doing. Is there, a, is, there, is there a methodology you go through? Is there a process that you've got for your team to go through that and talk to me about that? Yeah, so if you know anything about me, man, I am like super big on systems and teaching and mentorship. So I feel like that's like my core competency that is like I just stay in that zone of like teaching and training and, and motivating. So. Um, for myself, like my listing presentation, I'll give you an example, is a 10 page how to walk through on how to do a listing presentation. It's all the way from like, hey, when you arrive at the appointment, it can't be too early and it can't be too late. So when you walk up to the front door, being able to ring the bell or knock or, or knock on the door, and then you step back three steps away from the door. And then as they greet, you say, hi, it's you know my name from, from this company. We have our appointment at this time. Is it okay to come in? You come in, you then ask them, should I take off my shoes or not? Showing respect not only for their culture, but also for their home. They're more nervous than you are. And so you want to ask the questions and use an icebreaker, a little small joke that people say. It's like, hey, sell me the house. Who knows? I might even buy it. Uh, one of my friends might take me around and show me the place you know it better than anybody else. And when you say that, you encourage them that you're not some cocky real estate agent. You're actually just coming in there to learn about a home that they have lived in forever and, uh, and they know better than you. And so I, I walk it through. It's 10 pages of exactly how to do this. Um, and so when you do that um, and you're breaking it down to the minute for someone, um, they're able to be more prepared. 
And so I really, really do appreciate this um, because because then real estate agents are not like worried. They're not like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get outscripted in an appointment. Or I don't know what to expect on this thing. So how do I be more prepared? Well, uh, I, I have a friend of mine uh, who just happens uh, to be a billionaire and I got advice from him once. And uh, you know, people often listen to these when I, I talk on stage about advice from a billionaire. And uh, Here's, here's the two pieces of advice that he gave me a long time ago. This must be 15, 20 years ago. Number one, David, most billionaires that I know uh, are not the smartest guys in the world. In fact, uh, you know, they, they, they might, there might be a lot more uh, of people in the room that are smarter than they are. Uh, but here's one thing that they do really well. They make you feel like you're the only person in the room when they talk to you. And uh, there's, there's a lot of distraction with these our phones, our faces, and everything else that happens. There's so much noise in the real estate industry between lawsuits and you know who yeah. you should follow and you know, what's best and best practices for everything. There's tons of gurus out there, a lot of noise. But when you're with someone, you make them feel like they're the only person in the room. I'm here. I'm present in this conversation right now. Even if it's for three minutes or two minutes, you're the person I'm focused on. And so that was piece one of advice, and I've, I've just taken that to heart. And maybe if you talk with me, it's just like we're here right now. And then the second piece of advice was this, they would be in command of the facts. And uh, I always thought about, about that and I've, I've you know, tried to go back to that and glean more from it as time has, has gone on. And sure, real estate agents can actually get overwhelmed by that statement. Being in command of the facts might mean, you know, well, I got to learn everything about everything before I go out there. It doesn't mean that. It truly means understanding what's happening in, in the scenario, what's happening in the atmosphere. What are you noticing? And when you start to notice and be observant around you, then you're in command of what's going on. And then the second part is you're looking at the facts and not the emotion. And, you know, many people are just so aware about, you know, how do, how do things feel and how things are, but they're actually not looking at the facts. If I looked at the facts and I was, you know, being prepared about my real estate career, you know, it, it feels like, you know, the leads suck or it feels like no one wants to buy or it feels like you know, now is not a good time to buy. But let's look at the facts. And when we're in command of them, we realize like real estate's appreciating faster than it really ever has in recent years. So it's still an okay time to buy. And then what else is a fact? Well, real, you know, I understand that although interest rates are higher than they used to be, I understand that people still need to buy homes and sell homes. And so there's going to be a lot of transactions that still happen and there's plenty enough for me. That's also another fact. And so when you're in command of those facts, now all of a sudden you can be in command of your future. And when you show up to the a listing appointment and you're commanded the facts of like, listen, I am familiar with your market and I have driven around your area and I do understand what you're, what's happening in your homes. I don't need to know every single home, but I need to, do need to know a lot about what's happening. And that's why people follow my 10 page plan on how to be super prepared for a listing appointment. So is there a plan? Absolutely. What does it mean to be in command of the facts? And you learn everything that kind of goes into that scenario. And then the biggest one, in my opinion, is make people feel like they're the only person in the room when you talk to them. I think that's really uh, one of the most important things that that people should get out of this broadcast. Uh, those, two, the, 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 you know, the only person in the room. I think that's something really important that we all forget about because we are so distracted. I mean, you know, I, I I tell one of the things I tell agents all the time is if you go into a meeting with a buyer or seller and you put your phone on the on the on the table, shame on you. I mean, that thing should be either be turned off or on silent in your pocket. And you don't even know what's going on. So you have to really, you have to really concentrate on the people that you're with, and it's just, just really, really important. David, talk to me about um, the leadership and the onboarding and stuff. I mean, one of the things that um, I, I think there's one thing I heard you say is you talked about uh, you lead from overflow. From a note that I, I had from from when I heard you speak uh, a, a little while ago. Talk to me a little bit about that. Leading from the overflow. That's actually a word that like, you know, you can, everyone has different beliefs. And, you know, I just remember one day talking to the Lord and the Lord was like, you know, David, I want you to lead out of the overflow of your heart. And, uh, and that's always impacted me because, you know, just like a, a cup of water or whatever, that's, you know, might be half full, half empty, whatever you want to view it as, you know, uh, we forget that, uh, you know, one of the commandments is um, love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. And when you love yourself, when you fill that cup up, now all of a sudden you are full to be the best person, the best individual that you can be. Now you, I can have all these habits and goals and plans and I can actually do that, but I can't really do that if I'm half full or if I'm quarter full or if I'm running on empty like most people are. Right. And so leading on the overflow is this, this encouragement to come to the water that's always being given. And so when, it, when you fill up that cup, 
And you end up keep going to the source that fills you up for myself, it's my relationship with God. And then it overflows and it's constantly pouring over. And so it's an invitation to constantly pour into who you are as a human being um, and, and, and allow that overflow when it comes out. Now I get to pour that into other people's lives. And so, you know, many people try to go and they try to fill others up out of the half emptiness that they have in their own heart, hoping maybe that somehow that's in, in change going to fill you up. Um, but the reality is, is like that, that never happens. In fact, you feel more depleted. And so leading out of the overflow has very much to do with an invitation to go to the source and fill yourself up. And as that overflow happens, man, that's where you're able to be a, a huge blessing to others. So um, that's what leading out of the overflow means. And for myself, you know, how that applies to our companies and real estate, you know, for me, I, there's, there's an old saying about following in the steps of a rabbi. And, yes. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can hear many of the, uh, you know, advice from people. We have a lot of, you know, sages and gurus and everything in the real estate industry, but you yep. might never meet them, right? You might never, you're a, you're a famous guy who, you know, has people like, uh, you know, uh, Inman on here and, and uh, you, you know, Ricky Carruth and some of these like really great guys. Um, but many of us n never meet these people. Um, and the reality is, is that like, we can, we can hear the words, but it's never like walking in the footsteps. Like what would it be like to walk around with Tom Ferry every day? What would it be like to walk around with John Cheplak every day? That would probably be different than just hearing them talk for 30 minutes. If you followed me, however, for, th for more than just listening to me for 30 minutes or an hour on a podcast with you, and you followed me in my life, you would see how I live. You would see how I respond to people. You would see how I handle hard questions that get asked of me. And so the question is from this is like, okay, how do we take that into real estate? And so what we did was we created the mentor program and you heard me speak on this and like, oh, and the idea is, is like, what would it be like if you joined the real estate industry and you followed people around, they were your mentors and the mentors were actually bonus off of your production, not, not on, on your company dollar, on my company dollar, David Brooks company dollar. And that's what I do. I bonus mentors and leaders to become better leaders, to lead other people to sell more houses, to nearly guarantee that you're going to be successful in real estate and to obliterate that 87% chance of failure by having a mentor model in place. That's, that is, my, in my opinion, the secret sauce to life. There's not going to be anything. In it. You don't want to hand a kid a textbook and be like, this is what a dad does. Here's a textbook and here's how to ride a bike. That would be ridiculous. Instead, it's like, I need dad. I have to be dad to my daughter, Shiloh. And so I show up for her and I hold the handlebars and I'm with her and I walk alongside of her. And we have this for every single profession. We have residencies. We have people who are our journeymen, you know, in the electric, you know, and, uh, and plumbing industries. But we don't have it for real estate. We hand you a license. We say, best of luck. There's the phone. I hope you do well. That was your training when you got started. That was my training when I got started. And we have failed each other. We have failed the industry. We know why now it's broken. We know why now, and it's evidence in an 87% turnover rate. We know why now, you know, it's there's 100,000 agents that have left the industry at the time of this recording uh, in 2023. It's getting decimated because not, in my opinion, Dave, not of lack of value, but of lack of leadership, which leadership is the thing that causes the overflow, which is all of that value that, that we so crave. And so there's even one th thing that comes before bringing the value. It's the leadership and the building into the heart of the human. And so that's what I'm on a mission for. That's what I am obsessed with. That is what I'm a relentless about is building into people so they become better human beings, not only for themselves and their families, but then into the real estate industry, which allows other you know great things to happen. Okay, so we need about maybe a thousand more people just like you. Honestly, I mean, I mean, if we look at you, it's 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 the leadership that is lacking. Um, but there's nothing we can do about that leadership. All we can do is start trying to build new leaders and 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 have people graduate up the ladder, which is one of the things that you're doing. What would what would you say to a new real estate agent um, as far as getting started and, and what they need to look at? Um, as far as business, I mean, if, if they have the leadership, is it listening? Is it following? Is it modeling? What is the best advice you can give as far as that's concerned, Dave? Yeah. So if it was me and I had to like restart again and I didn't know, let's say I wanted to go and, uh, you know, one of my thoughts is if, you know, if this never worked out, I'd be a financial planner. Right. And so if I wanted to start and be a financial planner, I would find one of the best financial planners that I could possibly like model after. I'd want someone who is, you know, it, it has a character that I you know, admire or, you know, had, uh, you know, a, a book of business that I really admired. And then what I would do is I'd make a, I'd make a deal with them. And I'd say, here's the thing that I offer and I bring to the table. I bring my time. 
I bring uh, the ability and willingness to learn. I bring um, all of my intellect that I can possibly, uh, you know, leverage. Um, I'll bring my support and uh, and loyalty. And in exchange, if that's valuable to you, um, I would love for you to teach me everything you possibly know about financial planning. I want you to teach me everything that you possibly know about the hardest things and the objections that they face. And I want you to teach me a process that if I follow it and continue to do it, whether with you or on my own, that I will achieve the same results as you. That's what I would do. Um, and unfortunately, that's not the process of what most real estate agents do. They're, they're mostly looking for, I've been in a, uh, you know, in a job that I don't like, and so I want to be completely separated from the boss. Or they're in a place where you know, I've had a nine to five every single day, and I don't want to have that anymore, so I want freedom of life. And uh, you know what? I've been earning 60, 70, 80, 90, 120,000, whatever it is, a year um, at a job, and so I want the freedom to be able to do all those things. And what they end up doing is they end up exchanging one of the greatest gifts that we have uh, to earn the money that we earn, because Dave, it is really good money that we can earn as real estate agents. And uh, and they exchange that opportunity. They exchange it for three those three lies that I talk about. Um, and, and if it was me and I was starting over again, I would find that mentorship. I would find that discipleship. And uh, and I would, I would take the time to, in order to build a business. I don't know anything in nature that is just like, it's, it, it's instant. It's instant growth. You'd never see these massive oaks, these strong things, anything that grows really quick and fades away. You know, it might be cool. It might be a little flash, but it doesn't have longevity. Um, and so that's what I want to be. You know, um, the, 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 uh, the, the proverb is this, is that um, we want to be planted by the rivers of water and we bear fruit in our season. And, uh, and most people want to bear fruit instantly. And the quickest way that you can do that is by, by being alongside of someone else who's bearing fruit. And so that was, is my suggestion. Follow the teachers, follow the people who are doing it every day and not the people who are just like out of production, out of doing all this stuff and the pe people who do it every single day. Wow, man. That was, that was, that was great. I, I and, and it's just, I mean, Learning from you when we first met at a conference, we talked about, you were talking about the mentor program and I learned about your onboarding program and stuff. And it's just, I mean, it's, it's, it's such a breath of fresh air having, look, the majority of the people that we meet, the majority of the brokers, brokerages that we talk to, we, we both have said, used the word broken before. And I think truly it really is. And, and in this time in 2023, as you said earlier, we're going to lose a lot of real estate agents. And I think that there's going to be a, a new birth of our business one way or the other. I'm not talking about lawsuits. I'm not talking about any of that stuff. I mean, I think they're really out of, out of necessity. There has to be a new learning. I remember back in 05 to 12, you know, the difference of what happened when people turned into order takers and they had to relearn the business and people got out of the business and they came back in the business. Let's face it, the people that got into business when you did and, and right before are the ones that are really crushing it today, simply because they came in during the hard times, coming in during the difficult time, the easy times. And I don't mean that anything is easy in our business. It's just that, you know, over the last few years, people didn't have to worry about being as complete as you teach your agents. And I believe there's a really good uh, opportunity for not only single agents, but for teams and everything else. And, and I want to thank you so much for coming on today and, and, and giving us the information that you did. Um, and, and as we, as we wind down, um, you know, I want to ask you one question and go to another thing. You know, I want to ask you, how can I help you grow your business? Uh, well, I heard that there's a hat involved. Somewhere. That's going to help you grow your business. Is is that what it is? Well, <laughs> I, I think it might because the color it's 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 just a great color and it's just it's just a great thing. Hey man, you know what? I want to thank you so much for coming on today. Um, cool, brother. You know, I've I've been doing this for a long time and I really enjoy the people that I get to meet and and people say to me, Dave, how do you get all these people on? And it's really a simple answer. I ask them, right? I mean. Oddly enough, you and I and our, our, our story is really simple and short is that I had messaged you after that event and we run into each other in an airport. Right. Right sure. after that messaging, which was like, OK, this is cool. Right. Or not, yeah. because you were having some difficulty at the airport. But, man, I, I want to thank you so much for coming on. Uh, if uh, if you would just stay on for a second as we finish next week, we've got Jay Bond coming on uh, another great uh, real estate professional coming on uh, from the West Coast. Um, just another great guy, really blunt guy. Um, met kind of the same way. Uh, Jay's going to be coming on next Friday. And as we move forward, uh, David, your information is on the screen. 
your Instagram at David N. Brook, as well as uh, your email address and your website. Anything you want to add uh, to that at all? I would just love to bless your audience, man. So I just pray blessing over you guys into 2024. I know that it is a season where people are saying that it's going to be lean. And I just want to encourage you that there is a lot of hope. Um, there is a, a, a very strong opportunity for you to thrive in this market. There's a strong opportunity for you to have a lot of blessing in your life. And uh, man, I just want to be a conduit of that to you. And, and I'm thankful for Dave, who's allowed me on here today as well, who's bringing some value to the real estate industry. So thank you guys for, for listening uh, to me today. Yeah, I, I 100% agree with you. I think we're in such an opportune time, you know, and I think every time, every year is an opportune time. It's just how you're going to look at it and how you take advantage of it. Hey, everybody, I want to thank you for coming on. Next week, we've got Jay Bond. Uh, we're going to have a great time. Look, between now and then, Thanksgiving is going to be here. So so uh, enjoy. Give thanks. God bless everybody who watches this broadcast. And we'll see you for 285 next week. David, just stay on for a second. Hey, everybody, and let's go and hit the videotape, Nelson. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,